Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to the first of many Bleed and Soul videos you'll be seeing over the next few weeks. Now, just so we're clear up front, this video is sponsored by NCSoft, but you guys knew I was going to do videos on that anyway, so honestly, it barely matters. I gave my first impressions on the game roughly a month ago, a little bit longer than that, and since then, I've had some time playing in the several closed beta phases, and more importantly, I've been looking at what the release schedule of the game is going to be looking like and the content that's going to be available at launch and afterwards. So uh, currently, the game is in its third closed beta phase. There's two more that are going to be happening. The fourth closed beta phase is December 11th through the 14th and the fifth one is the 18th through the 21st. After that the game's going to go silent for a while over the holiday season but we have confirmed that there will be an official western launch of Blade and Soul on January 19th. This was confirmed on a recent live stream on the Blade and Soul Twitch channel. So the biggest question I've been getting regarding Blade & Soul is what kind of content the game is going to have. You know, it's coming over from Korea, and I'm sure a lot of people think it's just going to be nothing but an absolute grind fest. So currently in the beta, the end game is pretty limited. It's ex expected because it is a beta. It's mostly restricted to just the PvP systems and some grinding for weapon upgrades when you hit max level, which is currently 45, by the way. Fortunately for us, that recent live stream that I mentioned actually revealed the content that's going to be available at launch, as well as a little bit of their post-launch content schedule, and not really the schedule itself, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So first off, it was revealed that the first set of endgame dungeons are going to be the Pawarin dungeons. For those of you who don't know who Pawarin is, it's a girl with a minigun or a chain gun, and she's kind of the whole centralized theme of these dungeons. And for those who aren't aware of the way that dungeons and raids work in Blade and Soul, there's actually three tiers of dungeons, and that's 4-man, 6-man, and 24-man. Now, unlike what a lot of people probably expect, the 4-man is actually considered to be the highest difficulty, as it removes attack indicators, and it puts the party's reactions and cooperation to the test, making sure you can use abilities to protect allies, you carefully learn the attacks of the opponent, and things like that. That's not to say there aren't any notifications, you can usually visually see the attacks, but it's not as it is when you're leveling up, where you get that slow charge time that lets you know exactly when the attack is going to land, you really just have to read your opponent's actual movements. The six man, on the other hand, the attack indicators are there, and that's more of your standard dungeon. The four man is really what you would probably consider in terms of difficulty the raid content. Uh, and then the approach to the 24 man is actually more of an open instance, kind of, where players must complete certain events to spawn the final boss, which is still Pawarin. It's still the same area in the same dungeon, but it's not as linear as the dungeons and raids actually are. There's no first, second, third, final boss. It's more along the lines of you need to kill many bosses to spawn slightly stronger bosses to spawn the final boss and then the final boss has aoe indicators and are there all this is part of daily quests so you have a reason to do it and it's easier to participate in for a lot of people now blade and soul follows a model that i actually appreciate a lot those of you who have been following me for 14 for all these years you guys know that i've always been a fan of the final fantasy 14 eight man content where their philosophy is same you know less people means you can make a more controlled encounter and you can usually make it a little bit more personal and that's something that blade and soul follows as well you know they want these boss fights to feel personal and with that philosophy that less is more you know the hardest raids don't have to have more people i actually think the four-man party size works perfectly one big thing that it means is it also makes scheduling a lot less of a nightmare. If you want to be in like an endgame guild that does a lot of PvE stuff, you only need three other people. That just makes it so much easier, and I know that that's a big thing that people struggle with in both World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV. Now, with all that explanation of dungeons and raids, let's get back to the point. Pawar and the dungeons are going to be launching in all three party sizes at launch. Now, of course, there's still going to be the arena PvP, the 1v1s and the tag matches. Of course, you have the open world PvP, the uh, the battle between the Crimson and the... I just call them red and blue, just for the sake of it, because that's what everyone else calls them. Uh, and, of course, the other types of open world PvP that you can participate in. But uh, the other big question and the other big concern that I hear a lot about is content from the other regions obviously this game has been out for several years in korea and there's a lot of content we don't see right at the launch so you know there are other dungeons and raids like the tower of mushin and all its floors the bloody shark harbor there's a warlock class that's been out for some time and there's also a new class that was just announced it seems to be some like odd combination of the kung fu master and the force master classes and don't forget the level cap in the other regions is 50 not 45 and uh, warlock came with the level 50 uh, level cap increase back in the day. So in that same live stream, they address this. They address post-launch content. And it says that 
They're going to be giving official details on it soon, but they assured us that the Western version seeks to be competitive with the other regions in terms of their content release. This means that in order to catch up at launch, I am personally expecting a pretty aggressive content launch schedule, which is perfect because people like that constant flow of content. So it'll definitely be satisfying for a pretty long period of time for people who really like those consistent upgrades or updates, I should say. It was even hinted that that new class, the Kung Fu Force Master combination looking one, should be available worldwide before the next World Championship so people would have adequate time to master it. Or even as they said in the middle of the live stream, get good, get really good. So tell me, are you looking forward to learning more about Blade and Soul as it approaches its Western launch? Be sure to stick around for updates regarding content and check out my live stream. We have some sponsored streams coming up, as I said at the beginning, this is a sponsored video, and some sponsored giveaways with NCSoft, and those are going to be coming over the next month, you know, close beta 3, 4, and 5, as well as a, well, I don't want to say too much, but let's just say there's a special event on December 4th that you guys should come to my live stream for. Uh, now, since this video is coming out on Thanksgiving, have a happy Turkey Day, and come by the live stream if you can, especially if you're not in America. You can definitely come by the live stream. It's just a regular Thursday for you guys. Uh, as today on Thanksgiving, going to be giving away that a sponsored Masters Founders Pack that's valued at 125 bucks. So anyway, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for more Blade and Soul information and content. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, take care.